Welcome to the first day of level two type massage, you guys. Hi. I'm in Nepal right now, and I'll be teaching the rest of your class, but tonight, Rhonda is gonna be teaching your class, and I think all of you know Rhonda. She's studied with me extensively in Thailand, and um, she is an amazing teacher, so you're fortunate to be working with her. Tonight, you're gonna to be going through the first five movements, at a minimum, of our warming series. The warming series is part of the Muay Thai tradition. So this is something designed for recovery, and it's also designed to help you learn a way of working so that you're working in a way that supports your posture and that helps you to be healthy. All of these movements are designed to increase circulation and to bring your client's awareness to each little part of their body so that they can begin to let go of tension. So today you'll be doing the first five. If there's more time, then Rhonda will move on and show you some other things, but this takes a little while. So we'll go ahead and show you. Rhonda, go ahead and look down. Okay, so before we begin with these first five main movements uh, that we're gonna do with the warming series, we're gonna to wanna to take a moment and do wide kuru. So this will be warming our heart, we usually warm up our hands, showing respect to our client, to our line of teachers, Dr. Shavaka, and showing respect to ourselves. So let's take a moment and get grounded and center ourselves, coming from the heart center. And then we'll go ahead and hold on to our client's feet and just kind of squeeze a little bit on the plantar surface. Relaxing your body, connecting with your client. Breathing with them. And then we'll begin the way we begin in time massage one. We're going to press the heel of our client's feet and then we'll press the medial aspect of the arch and we're gonna press up at the ball of the foot. All of us staying on the medial aspect of their feet and then coming back to the arch and then finally returning to the client's heel. This palm pressing, one, two, three, two, one, walking up and then walking back down. Now we're gonna walk up on their feet Back and forth, all of these movements come from your lower body and they're just very relaxed. Your shoulders should be straight and even. And then as we come to the ankle and the lower leg, we're gonna turn our fingertips up. So our fingertips come up. And we're gonna press the gastrocnemius and soleus group away from that tibia. We'll come to the knees and we're gonna circle around the knees with our palms. And then up onto the quads, We'll raise up into a standing kneel, pressing both into the client's quads and then also a little bit out laterally. And we're gonna come all the way up to the anterior superior iliac spine, ASIS, and then we're just gonna walk down. Circling at the knees, Fingertips pointed up, pressing away, pressing the musculature away from that tibia. And we'll end with one, two, three, two, one, pressing at the heel. This is all in the, the medial aspect of the foot, pressing at the arch. And all of this needs to come from your hips, your lower body, the rest of your body follows. Pressing at the ball of the foot, and then pressing back at the arch, and now pressing again at the heel, okay. Let's go ahead and we're gonna have, uh, just because this is the way the video is set up, uh, we're gonna have, and you can go ahead and just relax, okay? okay. <laughs> we're going to uh, start on the right side of uh, Rhonda's body. So there are different thoughts on this. So in Thailand, uh, sometimes they'll say that the left side of the body is more feminine and so on. All females, you should start on the left side. Um, and then, you know, conversely, the right side is more masculine on all males just on the right side. Uh, but then other teachers will say that if your client's heart is on the uh, left side, 
more on the left side of the body, and it usually is, it's kind of a joke, that you would start on the left side of the body. And so, um, so we're gonna, but there's also a thought that you could balance the element that is uh, most strained in the moment. And so let's say that Rhonda's masculine side, because we both have these two sides to ourselves. So let's say that her masculine side is more strained right now. She's doing a lot of activity and she's having to think a lot of, a lot of like business things and she's not getting a lot of rest in her life and she really um, feels like she's shouldering a lot of the responsibility that is more like young and more typically what we think of as like that male energy. So we both have two sides to us. So we'll go ahead and start with that in mind. We'll start with Rhonda's right side. And we're mostly starting with Rhonda's right side so that I can turn her in the direction that I want for the video. So you want to think about those things when you choose which side. So I'm going to go ahead and lift under her pocket tail space and lift under her ankle. And I'm going to swing around and I'm holding again under the ankle and heel and under the pocket tail space. And then I'm going to take my, in this case, my foot that's more inferior with respect to her body and I'm going to put it across her straight leg. And then I'm going to place her right foot by my foot. I'm gonna move her arm out a little bit and I'm gonna support the shoulder and just press, just on that IT band right above her knee, superior to her knee, press that knee down to the ground, okay? And then I'm gonna come back and I'm going to kneel behind Rhonda by her hips and I'm going to go ahead and with the heel of my palm, so heel of my palm, right on her sacroiliac joint. This means I'm gonna be, need to be back a little ways away from her so I can make that work. But with the heel of my palm, right on her sacroiliac joint, and her PSIS is cupped in my palm, I'm going to go ahead and press her hip forward. And all this pressing comes from my lower body pushing forward. It doesn't come from me muscling anything with my arm. My arm is stacked, things are stacked, and then I move my body forward. My hip moves forward, the rest of my body moves forward, my arm moves forward as an extension, and I give her a nice stretch. And we can do this a couple times. We can move up a little bit, so we're in the low back, on the erector spine knee, and then we can move back, just medial to that PSIS on the sacroiliac joint. Stretching forward, okay? There's very little pressure on the shoulder. So on her shoulder right here, we want to go for maybe like 10% pressure. And, um, and so we don't really want to strain this area in these pec attachments. I'm gonna bring her arm over now, and I'm gonna go ahead and kind of push her hip down and allow her body to almost lay, um, almost lay prone. So she's almost on her belly, but not quite. If we need to, we can support, she looks pretty comfortable, but she could support under her head with her arm, or um, we could put a pillow there, so. But I want this leg so that I can access the hamstrings. Okay, so there are a couple ways to do this. We basically are gonna do a series of compressions for this first movement and in the warming series. And we're gonna move from the gluteal fold to just superior to the popliteal space. And so we have some different options. We can use our own tibia. So if I were going to do that, I would go ahead and I would press down with my tibia, starting with that gluteal fold. And then I would have these little presses incrementally all the way to just above, just superior to the popliteal space. So each of the presses are gonna be about one minute though, 60 seconds, so it's a long time. And we're essentially flushing circulation through her leg, through her lower body. Um, they're nice long holds that give her mind a chance to connect with what's been going on with tension in her body. So we can do presses with our tibia. We could, if we wanted to, we could press with our foot. So we can stand here. I like to have my toes pointed out laterally, not towards the midline of the body. I think it's more comfortable so we could do one minute presses there and work our way down um, we could if we wanted to if we felt comfortable we could sit facing away from our client and we could start with the presses starting with the gluteal fold working to just superior to the popliteal space by using our forearm and just leaning our body weight into those presses 
So we could do that. Uh, or you could do what Ajarn Pichette, one of my teachers in Thailand that teaches this Muay Thai warming tradition and this way of working that's so good for you as a therapist and really helps your client too. Uh, we could do what he does, which is actually sit on the client. So this is something that usually I will teach to uh, either couples or family members, something they can do uh, to help with hamstring injuries or help with really just tight hamstrings that are resistant. So I don't do this a lot on my clients, but I want you guys to experience it because it is uh, very traditional and um, it is a uh, part of like the commoner style. So if we were doing royal Thai massage, you would never use any part of your body except for your hands and your fingers. You stay very far away, but that's very hard on your body as a practitioner. So this is the commoner style. This is like the style that for uh, the athletes and the style for your family members and friends and farmers, people that are like out really working and doing hard work. So um, if you're doing that, then we'll try the sitting style. We're gonna sit and we're sitting on uh, what kind of a curve. So you're not really on your glutes as much as you are almost all the way up to um, the flat of your back. So we're gonna put, I'm gonna put my left leg out a little bit and I'm going to tuck my right leg heel towards me a little bit and get in a position where I can sit and relax and we'll stay here 60 seconds. So for this first one, we really are going to stay about 60 seconds. And I don't have a timer with me, but when you do this in class with Rhonda, I want you to stay for the full 60 seconds so that you can feel what that's like and so that your client can also experience it. While you sit here, you don't want to be too busy. You don't want to be moving around. Your client would feel all of that. You just want to allow their brain to connect with their body and you want to allow them to get into a meditative space. So let's say that was 60 seconds. On this first press, we're going to lift up, allow that blood to flush down through her leg. Do you feel that warming? Oh yeah. yeah. And resetting circulation, resetting the nervous system, and then we'll settle back down into the same spot for that first press. And you'll stay for another full 60 seconds. So for demonstration purposes, let's say that was 60 seconds, and we'll lift up slowly, and we'll move down just a tiny bit, just incrementally a tiny bit to our next spot. And we'll stay here for 60 seconds. say that 60 seconds for demo purposes. Um, we'll lift up again just a tiny bit, come down to the next spot. As we get close to the popliteal space, we're going to go ahead and lift our client's lower leg up, bending the knee. This will help our client to um, ensure that we're not putting pressure on that popliteal space. So it protects the knee and raises everything up. So we'd stay here for 60 seconds. up 
just a little bit, and we do our last press just above that popper tilt space, staying for 60 seconds here. So this is the progressive warming of the hamstrings, essentially flushing blood through the hamstrings, progressively starting at the gluteal fold and then ending with your last, last press and just superior to the popliteal space. So with each press, each compression, we're suppressing circulation and then we're flushing it through because we get a little increase in circulation, like a, a damming effect, and then we open the floodgates and flush that through. So this, of course, sends a signal to both the body and the brain to reset things and to um, stop chronic holding patterns. So let's say about 60 seconds. We're going to go ahead and lift up. We'll come down to our clients. Uh, bottom of our client's ankle. We're gonna hold the ankle and hold the heel. We're gonna traction your leg. Just traction your back, okay? All right, and then we are going to reach under our client's pelvic tilt space in that bed leg, and we're going to just roll them back onto their back. So I rolled Rhonda onto her uh, left side, and then I actually worked on her left leg. So even though I started on the right side uh, with that stretch and everything, I ended up working first this, uh, this left leg. So I'm gonna stay with the left leg. So our next movement that we're going to do is lifting this left leg up and bending the knee. And this is going to be IT band presses. So I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna be sitting just lateral, just the side of Rhonda. And my lower leg with respect to her, so it's more inferior, uh, that's just going to kind of relax over here and be tucked away. And then my right leg is going to do the work. So this might be hard to see, but you'll also have Rhonda demoing it for you. So I'm gonna make sure that I am below um, the greater trochanter of the femur with these IT pan presses because that would not be very comfortable. And I've got my, my tibia right here. So even if you can't see it, you can know where your tibia is. All right, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and place Rhonda's IT band starting as superior as I can on uh, her leg, so but just below that greater trochanter of the femur. And I'm going to gently roll her IT band onto my tibia. And it's pretty blunt pressure, but I'm, I'm gonna hold pressure here for about 30 seconds. Do you want more than that? Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, and we'll just stay here and wait. And we're going to do a very similar thing to the hamstring presses. We're just going to work our way progressively up to just superior to the patella, just superior to the knee with these presses. So about 20 to 30 seconds. Just got a little button here, so I'm gonna skip that. And I'm gonna move to the next spot progressively. I'm gonna pull her leg back towards me. When I pull back, I keep my tibia and my leg in the same place that it was. And I just use my arms, they're straight and locked. And I lean back with my hips and I just relax into this and I just soften into it. And I use leverage. So now I'll go ahead and release. I'll move to the next spot, pressing in, leaning back, just relaxing, allowing her brain to connect with her body and to feel and process the tension that's there in a supportive way where she doesn't have a strong emotional reaction to it, but instead is able to see it and soften to it, disengaging that chronic holding response. So now I'm gonna move up a little more. So if my client's leg and it feels like, oh my gosh, I'm out of tibia, you know? Like our legs don't match up. All you have to do is just move their leg or move your leg to a different position so that you then do match. And then roll their IT band on 
onto that blunt surface of your tibia. So you just look at your client, you look at your body, and you align your two structures so that you can place pressure where you need to, and you can do it in a way where you're not straining, where you're relaxed. It's a way of working. It's the law of least resistance. It's conserving chi. Um, when we work this way, I guess in Western terms, it should be called flow, but it's softening into what you're doing and allowing your client to soften too. Now, if you do this, your breathing will naturally align with your client and will naturally begin to slow down. space and we're going to go ahead and roll that IT band onto our tibia holding for 20 to 30 seconds and then releasing okay we'll go ahead and lower her leg 